Good afternoon. My name is Larry O'Brien. I'm Vice President of Research at ARC Advisory Group, and I'm also an analyst on the cybersecurity team at ARC. And this is another of our ongoing interviews with uh, top executives and leaders and movers and shakers in the world of industry and the world of cybersecurity. And this afternoon, I have with me Mr. Del Rodias. Uh, good afternoon, Del. How are you? I am great, Larry. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for joining us today. Um, just by way of introduction, Dell leads a global team of security experts focused on thought leadership and security solution architectures uh, for IT OT industries. He is, in fact, the director of uh, OTICS cybersecurity at Palo Alto Networks. Uh, I hope I got that title right, Dell. No, spot on, Larry. Yeah. Good, good. Um, and he has over 25 years of industry experience from industrial cybersecurity, telecommunications, aerospace, defense, and high tech manufacturing with roles in business strategy and engineering. And on top of that, Dell is certified as a global industrial cybersecurity professional or a GICSP. Um, so once again, thank you for joining us today. Um, yeah, I, it is my pleasure, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm really glad that you're here. Uh, you know, Palo Alto is one of the leading companies, I think, in, uh, in ICS and OT level cybersecurity. Uh, you know, a manufacturer of uh, next generation firewalls, as, as well as a whole range of products uh, for OT level cybersecurity. Um, and let's get into that a little bit more, you know, industrial security. Uh, I mean, we cover these markets in our reports, and it's really a broad range of products and services. Uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about what aspect of this market um, that Palo Alto is focused on, and how are your solutions different? Right, you know, so, you know, we like to think that we're, uh, as the largest pure play cybersecurity company in the world that you know, we focus on providing this completeness of security via an, a platform. And in, the, in, in our case, it's something that can span IT and OT. It really addresses the needs of OT and ICS today as well as the needs for the future. So it's a platform that's comprised of three main aspects. I think there's the network element and increasingly going forward as uh, digital transformation happens for industrial organizations, the cloud is a key component of our, our platform, as well as as the, the, the organizations mature, the security operations component. So these three pieces really provide the main components of our, our platform, the three legs, if you will. From, the, from a network standpoint, we think of it as a firewall as a platform where you're able to implement in a very consistent way this zero trust networking principles across your entire OT infrastructure, whether it's at the perimeter or at the plant floor or in the future OT, which uses the cloud, which uses SD-WAN and even 5G, right? So you need to have this consistent approach to protecting the network, whether it's the OT of today or tomorrow. And as the OT organizations move some of their workloads up into the cloud, you know, for digital twin, historian, predictive maintenance, et cetera. That's another area that you need to consider, specifically the, the development environment, the DevOps environment. So this concept of a set, set DevOps uh, proficiency in your organization. So securing the cloud is another aspect of OT that we see actually coming very quickly as we engage with, with our end users. And, and if the third component is the security operations center. So as you mature, you're gonna to want to be able to have this ability to quickly detect threats and respond to them. And you know, in the future where there's gonna be a lot of IoT, industrial IoT devices, there's gonna be a big role for the security orchestration and automation as well as the security that leverages machine learning. So that's really the third component is, you know, we basically have something where organizations need to address the sweet spot of today's needs, the, the network security, the plant segmentation, et cetera, then as they modernize, they're gonna need something else. So we kind of set this platform where they're kind of designed to work well together. That's really what, what our strategy is, right? Uh, what makes us different? I would say that we, we don't deliver point solutions, right? We, we're in the business to kind of, again, offer this platform. And so everything we've built has been designed to enrich or augment whatever came before that in a way that they work well together. So for so for example, we're the only vendor that integrates the in industrial protocol security with the IoT security, uh, a built-in service on our, our firewalls, and the threat prevention services, the IPS functionality, as well as 5G, 
right within the same firewall and in, in other or architectures you may need to combine these and stitch them together and make them work but these things are natively integrated into our technology and they work together they were designed to work together so uh, this allows our customers to really have that strong detection as well as that native enforcement other technologies may depend on other technologies to actually take action they detect but they don't actually take action so we've kind of consolidated that uh, so so net net what we're able to provide you is a, an ot security platform that spans your entire ot footprint from the perimeter to the plant floor to the cloud 5g sdn etc and gives you that operational efficiency because we're not giving you point solutions again they, these were designed to work together and at the same time it allows you to extend the security to the future ot environment without having to do a rip and replace so that i would summarize as kind of our focus and our differentiation yeah yeah, yeah a lot of sense and, and um you know i don't think you can any longer say that the worlds of uh it and, and ot are, are separate anymore you know these are worlds that have been merging for a long time uh, and we're seeing a lot of you know what's traditionally it or, or iot technology being used uh, in manufacturing operations and critical infrastructure right uh, you mentioned 5g and then the problems are getting a lot more complex, right? Which is why we need more automation and, and uh, use of things like uh, AI and machine learning, um, you know, as we try to respond to these increased uh, cyber threats that are out there. Right. Um, and this is also, I think, kind of creating a struggle among the end user community uh, to maintain a good cybersecurity posture with all these changes as well. And, uh, and our research indicates that too. Right. Um, do you think this is true? And if you do, uh, what are the major problems related to this, uh, you know, ability to maintain a good posture? Um, and how can Palo Alto help end users overcome these hurdles? Right. I think, again, there are kind of three things I think about when, when I see some of the, the challenges. Uh, number one is around the per pervasiveness and, and granularity of, of visibility. Right to not only the the traffic but also to the threats, and so that kind of entails being able to uh, see what's happening and implement the policies to try to prevent bad things from happening in the big to, in the first place, as well as being able to have that granular response mechanism. So I think that's the first thing. That's a lot to do with with the network security, and in in this case, we're talking about OT specific granularity. And so being able to also have this consistency across the different environments, whether it's the, the perimeter or, or again, the plant floor or even the harsh environments, you know, those remote IO locations where you may not even have any personnel. And it's sometimes right. hard to extend this into these legacy environments. So I think that's a big challenge. Uh, so. The way we really assist with that is giving you these capabilities to get into the detailed controls. What I mean by that is having these layer seven controls where you know you you have the ability to actually control the industrial protocols, uh, things like Modbus or Siemens S7 or Ethernet IP, and getting down to the functional level control. So uh, one of the use cases that we're starting to see more of is where third parties are only given access to certain types of functionality when they access the OT environment. So a, a vendor may be able to read the PLCs, but not be able to program them. So older technologies don't give you that kind of visibility and control, whereas the technologies that we bring to the table allow you to do exactly that. Not only this, but you can also tie that particular uh, access policy to specific users or user groups Right, so uh, we call this user ID, and so you're actually able to couple the power of application control with role-based access to have role-based access policy control or application control or protocol uh, controls. Right, so I think when you're starting to see this level of detail, you're able to make more sense of what's normal and what's anomalous or malicious, and take appropriate responses. So I think. Really, that's that's a, the step one is being able to see what's happening and apply this very granular level of policy that's consistent with what needs to be done in your particular OT environment and not nothing more. Right? I think that's where we see industry moving towards. The second is kind of 
understanding what are the risks that are associated in deploying you know, future technologies like the cloud or 5G or SD-WAN in this you know, struggle or, or uh, contest to transform your uh, environments to get the most out of out of it and from a productivity standpoint, right? The digital transformation of OT, I think you're either in the side of moving so so fast that you forget about what's actually needed from a cybersecurity standpoint or not taking action or moving very slowly because you kind of have this this fear that you might get hacked and your OT will get compromised. So I think uh, cloud is going to be a big part of the modernization and organizations are really struggling to understand what are the risks that are associated with using the cloud. So there's both the element of the network security as well as the actual workloads that you need to secure the applications and making sure that your cloud environments like your AWS or Azure are configured properly and not being used as a backdoor by attackers. So I think uh, the next part of our, our capabilities that helps there is what we call our Prisma uh, portfolio. And it's really about securing the cloud itself and making sure that the way it's configured cannot be compromised by uh, attackers, you know, doing this in a automated way using mach machine learning to minimize the requirements on the security administrator, kind of automate that as well. So that's the second aspect is kind of securing the, the cloud. And the third part I would say is around having a robust security operations. So um, most OT organizations I know are not there yet where they need, they're, where they're thinking about how to integrate some of this OT specificity to their to their SOC. So uh, that's, that's an, a next, level of maturity that I, I think is uh, uh, a part of the process. And as organizations uh, get there, they're starting to employ things like security orchestration and automation, where you start applying OT specific playbooks. You know, your HMI gets compromised. Right, right. How, how do you have this process where you automatically patch the uh, uh, sus suspected ransomware uh, machines that machines that have been potentially at risk for ransomware or have been infected by ransomware. So the process of quarantining, how do you automate the process of cutting over to a clean operator machine, right? These are things which you don't want to repeat the process every time something like this happens. Hopefully it doesn't happen often, but you want to kind of have this playbook and, and turn that on right away so that you could remediate and get back to running the business very quickly because every minute of downtime, as you know, is quite expensive in, in OT, especially in the manufacturing world or oil and gas. So, uh, you know, these type of technologies will come into play as well as finding that needle in the haystack when you may have been compromised by a nation state or other targeted uh, attack. And so you want to be able to automate the process of finding these indicators of compromise and know, being able to come back and, you know, uh, quarantining systems or locking down systems that have been impacted such that you can do your incident response and in, uh, forensics, right? So I think we, we bring, we have this technology that we call Cortex that's also all about the SOC and all about using machine learning to aid the process of threat detection and response. And, and in the world where IoT devices are just going to be more pervasive, there's no way that a human can keep up with looking at any type of IoT related threats, you know, supply chain type of attacks. So, you know, Cortex is something that we, we've brought specifically to make SOC teams more capable and to reduce the burden on the, the SOC operators, right? Yeah, and uh, I think, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about this convergence of IT and OT. Uh, a lot of people don't like that term, but you know it, it is happening. Uh, we we do see IT and OT cybersecurity organizations merging together. Um, you know, there's there's been a lot of uh, uh, pain, I think, you know, in trying to make this happen. Some companies are doing a, you know quite a good job at it, and some are facing a lot more challenges. Um, many end users tell me they would like to drive more convergence between it and ot cybersecurity programs can you tell us a little bit about how your company uh, can help them ease this integration yeah that's a really great point larry and i i think we're also seeing similar things uh and the 
the the the capacity or appetite for integrating the two functions seems to be uh, regional dependent as well as vertical dependent. You know, in, in some parts of the world, they're just not there yet. They're very divided. I would say in in uh, the the U.S. Uh, there's a little bit more maturity that I see, but still there is that kind of clear distinction, especially in some verticals like utilities are are more separated versus say manufacturing where they're a little bit more integrated. Um, the, the way we've kind of seen organizations benefit from from our technology is that we don't necessarily have a a separate type of uh, platform for IT and separate one for OT. Yeah, we have industrial firewalls because of the environmental requirements, but it's essentially the same technology that you would apply in IT and OT. It's really about the context. So our App ID technology, which is what's used to detect the um, industrial protocols, is also the same technology that you could use to detect things like Facebook or or YouTube or you know uh, SSH. So it's really flexible enough to address both sides of the uh, of the enterprise, right? Similarly, our IoT security technology can identify. ICS devices like PLCs and RTUs and HMIs, as well as general purpose workstations or, or printers. So, you know, when, when you think about trying to uh, have a har harmonized approach to security across IT and OT, our platform is basically designed to enable that. And, you know, the, the, the governance that you need to, to manage the security teams is, is enabled by different administrator profiles as well as uh, you know, creating user groups so that you know you can have that specificity of control for the OT side and the IT side and have a level of governance above that to manage both sides. So we can also give them the, enough flexibility to kind of make it distinct between both sides in terms of how security as is administered and operated on a day-to-day -day basis. So so really that's that's really what we do is try to not really make special purpose uh, components, but giving you a platform that is flexible enough to address both sides. So there's this consistency across the whole enterprise. Yeah, and I think we need that consistency. Um, I think cybersecurity is also one of the big reasons why a lot of companies are sort of uh, reluctant, uh, you know, maybe to forge ahead with a digital transformation program or, or implementing industrial Internet of Things technologies. Uh, how do you think that Palo Alto sort of alleviates these concerns for end users and, and sort of enables them to sort of forge ahead, you know, in a more aggressive manner with this digital transformation? Yeah, I think I think there's a lot. I mentioned earlier that I think there's kind of a, a double edged sword with with digital transformation and that if you move too fast, that you might be overlooking some of the cybersecurity requirements. If you move and, and if if you're not understanding really what's happening or what are the concerns and you might move too slow and you're not getting that productivity gain that you envision with all of these investments. So from our standpoint, what we really bring to the table when we speak with our other organizations is just educating them. Okay, hey, you know what, when you're talking about 5G private lands, uh, you know, a lot of people think that there's no security approach today that can address that, but that's not really the case. Uh, we actually have the ability to uh, break open this protocol for 5G and see what's happening within there and apply the same type of capabilities that we just talked about with application visibility and threat inspection and control. So I think just giving them an awareness of the risks and what's actually possible and also what, what are best practices, right? So educating users on, you know, if you're going to modernize, these are the things you need to think about and have something in place to uh, identify the, the, the threats and mitigate the threats. So I think education is really a, a big part of this and making sure that the technology can give them that zero trust approach that is required. Because what, what zero trust is all about fundamentally is being able to identify the assets that need to be accessed and identify who needs to access that when, why, where, and implementing some kind of policy that 
uh, allows you to actually realize these controls. So these least privileged controls, role-based access controls, as they call them, right? With these type of mechanisms in place and, and realized by the technology, such as what we bring uh, via our, our, our portfolio, our platform, you know, you'll, you'll be much more confident that, you know, you've done the best that you can to reduce the attack surface, right? And you've also not solely depended on that. You've turned on some threat detection services that in case any bad things may have gone through the tunnels that you've opened, right? That you'd be able to detect that and you've responded. And you've applied, you, you've basically recruited machine learning to help you in this process of detecting and responding. So I think with these type of uh, controls, this type of awareness on the, the risk, right? You kind of uh, are more confident to adopt these modern technologies like 5G, SD-WAN, cloud, et cetera, right? And, and, um, and you know, kind of accelerate the time to realizing the, the payback or the ROI on your investments in digital transformation. Well, those all sound like pretty good uh, elements if you're trying to build a cost justification strategy for cybersecurity. Uh, can you tell us, you, could you elaborate a little bit more? Because I think, you know, justifying investment in more sophisticated cybersecurity can be kind of difficult. Yeah. Uh, for end users that are trying to pitch this to their management. Uh, you know, I think it's very similar to, uh, to process safety, which is an area I used to follow the systems that basically keep plants from blowing up, right? Yeah. Uh, you think it would be a no-brainer, but justification can be a real problem. Uh, do you have anything else you'd like to share to elaborate on what Palo Alto is doing to help these customers justify these more sophisticated investments in cybersecurity? Yeah, I think there's a couple of dimensions that we typically uh, like to bring bring at the forefront for discussion. I think one is around the technology benefits and the second are around the economic benefits. Obviously, with the audience that we have at ARC executives, they need to be able to, end of the day, explain the the reasons why they're adopting new cybersecurity technology, which could be seen as, you know, an expense with, with no payback. But actuality, we do see that there's quite a bit of, uh, you know, value justification, uh, ROI justification. So from, a, from the technology standpoint, just to kind of understand what actually these capabilities bring to the table, we, we offer a couple of free services that organizations can take advantage of. One is what we call our security lifecycle review where we you know, provide the, the gear uh, without any cost to uh, evaluate the visibility and the threat around threats and applications that you get when you adopt these new type of technologies. And uh, over a period of days, we basically look at what, what we see. And, and at the end of the, the period, we provide like some kind of management report and telling you, okay, these are the threats that we saw, obviously bad. These are applications that we start running on your network, OT applications, IT applications, are these normal? You know, then these are things that you could provide to your leadership and say, these, these are these are the benefits that we see. We, we now know that our users are using, for example, risky cloud storage applications from OT or they're, they're playing PlayStation on the, the ICS network, right? So these kind of things often crop up in our analysis or, you know, we have did you know that we have this uh, crypto mining happening on some of our historians and skater sure, masters, sure. right? So th we, we give you that kind of assessment to help you understand um, what kind of uh, benefits you get from the technologies. We also have a more outside looking in assessment where we can tell you what are the assets within your organization that are exposed on the internet and what are the risks that are associated with that. So we kind of, uh, use uh, automated approach to scour uh, the public information about your, your organization. And that's basically an, an outside attacker's view, right? So we kind of give you the outside attacker's view and see where they, what they're thinking. Like they're probably gonna go after this machine that's probably accessible and then try to pivot from there. So that's another free assessment, right? So that they can understand uh, what, what's, uh, what their ex risk exposure is from an attacker's point of view outside. Uh, the other thing that we do on the more of an economic standpoint is kind of, you know, kind of come back to you with, okay, if you were to implement this kind of technology, uh, this is the kind of benefit you would, would get, you know, strictly cost savings versus 
you know, adopting point solutions versus uh, also, you know, what kind of uh, risk reduction you have, which may be associated with plant downtime, uh, mm -hmm. what kind of opportunity cost there is in delaying your digital transformation projects, right? All of these have money, real money tied to them. And we can quantify these and kind of help you make the case internally in terms of, uh, you know, why invest, right? Obviously, uh, you know, if you spend X number of dollars, you will receive this many fold returns in, you know, total cost of ownership. So these these are the type of things we, we feel are in, needed where you address both the technical and the business side of the, the equation. Yeah, yeah, I've always been fond of opportunity cost as a really good, uh, it was a really good measure. That can be really significant if, you know, if you miss out on, a, on an emerging business opportunity that you need to quickly react to, that can be pretty costly. And downtime, especially at OT, uh, you know, we, we did some research at ARC and discovered that da unplanned downtime is costing the process industries worldwide well over a trillion dollars a year. So that's another really huge opportunity there. Oh. <clears throat> and we, uh, of course, we know nobody's playing Xbox or, or PlayStation <laughs> control room or, or doing anything like that. So I think things like that are, are very valuable to uh, to discover because there, there's OT is different. I mean, that's that's what we always say. Uh, there are things that go on in OT uh, that don't generally happen, uh, you know, in, in the IT domain. Um, so we're out of time this afternoon. Dell, I want to thank you very much for attending and, and for you know, sharing some of this knowledge with us. Yeah. Uh, and I think yes. if anybody's interested, I, I think they can go to Palo Alto Networks dot com, right, to find out more. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, thanks again for having us. And, and once again, this is Larry O'Brien, Vice President of Research Research for ARC, uh, talking with Delro Diaz of Palo Alto Networks. And thanks again.